What's Gucci Mane? What's up, guys? Ry here, BullCitySpeed.com, and we are talking cutting metal in today's not so pro tip. It's been a long awaited one. I apologize for the absence, but life happens from time to time. Uh, what we're going to talk about, though, is the methods that I use here in the garage and how I've kind of obtained more and more stuff over the years. We're talking about the upsides and the drawbacks to every method uh, here on the bench, and also going to do a little bit of an unboxing video on a new product that I got. Uh, why is cutting metal so badass? Uh, because if you get to that point where you can cut it and then put it back together, like if you have a welder, you can make anything you want. It's no longer about, will this piece fit my car? It kind of turns into, everything fits my car. It's just how much work am I going to have to do to make it. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Uh, first things first, this is my Craftsman Professional Series Reciprocating Saw. Um, a lot of people just call it a Sawzall. Sawzall is a name brand, made by Milwaukee. But these are all just pretty much Sawzall. For, so for, for the sake of conversation, this is my Craftsman Sawzall. Uh, the plus sides, you don't need access to the back side. Uh, it has a long reach depending on the length of the blade. And this thing, it, it can pretty much get anywhere and cut through anything. So if you are junkyard shopping, this is a really handy piece of gear to have. Um, these are as destructive or as surgically precise as the idiot pulling the trigger. And that's... Pretty much the the upsides to it um i put a lot of miles on this one this is a craftsman one and man this thing has worked great the blades i use are the torch brand made by milwaukee uh get them at home depot and they last a really long time if you take care of them don't cut everything at full throttle uh use trigger control let the saw do the work speed doesn't always mean it's going to get through there any faster Spend the money on the right blade, or a good blade though. Um, Harbor Freight brand blades, they're gonna turn purple and they're gonna lay over the teeth after like two tubes. It's not the most accurate though. Making straight cuts is not the easiest thing to do. And you are limited by how far out this blade comes. So those are the drawbacks on it. That's pretty much it. Next one, man, this is my DeWalt four and a half inch uh, grinder equipped with the death wheel. We call it a death wheel because if you catch this thing the wrong way, man, this thing will come apart and just jam into your face. If you look online, you can see tons of pictures of these blades lodged in people's skulls. Safety is paramount, imperative, whatever cliche word you want to attach to that. It's recommended to wear double eye protection, so the glasses and a face shield. And when you look at the pictures and the gruesome photos that you can see online of when shit goes wrong with these, you'll see why. These are really handy though because these can get into some places where sometimes your reciprocating saw can't. They, again, are as accurate as the idiot with his hands on it. Other handy part about this too is you can swap out that wheel and put on different attachments. You can put a grinding wheel on there so you can cut it, swap it out, put a grinding wheel on there and get the rough shape and then you hit it with a flat disc, these guys, and you can damn near get a polished finish on it. So for prepping, it's kind of a one-stop thing. If you were going to only buy one tool, one tool alone to cut metal and do all your prep work on metal, this is the tool to get, a grinder. You can do anything with just a grinder and a welder. You can build anything you want in the world. The, 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 the drawbacks on it, obviously, are it's kind of dangerous. Um, if you go too crazy with it and you're not good with cutting with it, the... The blade can kind of burn the metal at the end of it and uh, work harden or whatever the hell they call it. So it takes a little bit more prep work to get it ready for welding. It's not as a clean of a cut as a saw blade, but it's cleaner than the next methods that we're going to talk about. And that is plasma cutting as well as a torch. So I have a Northern Tool brand plasma cutter. It's 220 volts. It'll cut up the quarter inch thick metal. It gets in more places than my grinder does, but it leaves some slag on there. So there is some dress up work that you have to do after using a plasma cutter. The upside of a plasma cutter is obviously it can get in anywhere. Downsides and drawbacks are it's kind of expensive. Depending on the bottle that you get, you have to have an air compressor. And those are really the only drawbacks that I see. But it's pinpoint accurate. Some guys are so good that they can write their name with it. I am not that good with a plasma cutter. But there's just been some things on a project where I absolutely have to have a plasma cutter to be able to cut out tight, intricate places. Next thing I'm going to talk about, and this is the one I'm excited about. This is one I just got. I've wanted one of these for a really, really long time. This is my Milwaukee 6232-20 deep cut bandsaw. Um, 
I've wanted a bandsaw for a real long time. I wanted a vertical bandsaw for cutting metal. If you've never priced out a vertical bandsaw for cutting metal, holy crap, a pair to have your mind blown on how expensive these things are. Did you know there is a difference between a wood cutting bandsaw and a metal cutting bandsaw? I didn't know that until I started doing a little bit of homework on them. The ones that you find on Craigslist that are relatively within the most reasonable price range are usually a wood cutting one. So you can't just throw a, a metal blade on a wood one, you're gonna burn the blades up. I heard there are rumors that there are companies out there that make a metal blade for a wood bandsaw for the cheap asses like myself. Uh, I couldn't really find too much on it and honestly I wanted a portable one as well. So I wanted both. So that's why I went with this. Benefits to a portable, to, to a bandsaw, straight cuts, very clean cuts, drawbacks. It's big, it's bulky. This thing you can't really get into it all kinds of places. So this is basically used for cutting metal on the bench. If I wanna make straight cuts on uh, exhaust tubing, roll cage tubing, then this is my go-to. Uh, the downside to this is it's not a vertical bandsaw. So how can we solve that? Well, that leads us to our unboxing. Check this out. I haven't even opened this package yet. So I'm a little bit excited about this. This is a vertical bandsaw table attachment for my Milwaukee bandsaw from swagoffroad.com. I hate that word swag, but when you attach the word offroad and .com at the end of it, it becomes pretty cool. If you haven't been to their website, check them out. Uh, I have one of their air over hydraulic conversions for my tubing bender. It uses a Harbor Freight Ram, and it's a lot cheaper than actually buying one from the, the company. Uh, they make these attachments for all kinds of stuff for in, for in your garage. Tons of tons of really, really cool stuff for the do-it-yourself guy, or even the professional kind of just getting their, their feet underneath of them. So, let's see what's in the box. Hashtag Brad Pitt. So I bought this thing, it took a couple days to get here. Um, it's all laser cut and it's powder coated. There's nothing else in there. Uh, here's the instructions. There's a few attachments that you can get as far as assisting you with being able to make miter cuts and stuff like that. So what do we got in the box? We have the tabletop itself. The cool thing about this, once I read the instructions, is that this will be able to fit on the bandsaw without any tools. So I can take it on and off as I need. Uh, there you go, swagoffroad.com, check them out. So I'm gonna bore you to death while I put this thing together. Remember kids, safety third. So one thing they tell you in the kit uh, and you can buy it from the website or you can get one at Harbor Freight as a foot pedal because the trigger is back here now or you don't have access to it. So you're gonna reach around behind it and this doesn't have a trigger lock like some of them do. So you have to clamp the trigger down and then you can run it on a foot pedal. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Swag Off-Road Porta Band Stand. It is awesome. Uh, I really, really like this. I am not paid to say that. Swagoffroad.com. If you want to go get your own, go check them out. This is the version 4. So when you go there, read the notes, though. The versions don't mean that version 4 is better than 3 or 2 or 1. It actually means what saw in particular that's going to fit. Um, I got about 500 bucks wrapped up in this whole setup here. You can recreate this for substantially less money though. This is a brand new Milwaukee bandsaw. Uh, I like to invest my money long term wise when I'm buying tools. So I know that this is going to last me a very, very long time. You can buy a used one. It'll probably last just as long. You can buy a Harbor Freight one. Buyer beware. But you can get a port band stand to fit almost any maker model bandsaw that they, that they have out there. And they actually have these for substantially less too. You can get just a flat top one, I think, that mounts into a bench vice. So that's like the version one. And it's even cheaper. It's like 50 bucks. It's crazy. Uh, made in America, assembles with basic hand tools, very, very easy to put together. I can take the saw in or out without even using any tools. 
I have the capability of a vertical bandsaw with a fraction of the price and a fraction of the real estate taken up by it. This thing is tiny. And when I don't want it occupying space on my bench, I take it apart and tuck it away. It can be permanently affixed to a bench if you want to, to kind of stabilize it. But so far, I just cut a piece of stainless on it, and I don't see a reason why I really would have to mount it permanently. I can clamp it down with a vise or, you know, whatever. So if you want to go ahead and pick yourself up one, head over to, once again, swagoffroad.com. You can check out all the other fantastic products that they have there. Um... And yeah, man, this thing is great. I highly, highly recommend it. Uh, so, as always, I am Rive with Bull City Speed. Make sure, if you like this video, hit subscribe below, please. I'm begging you. Once we hit 100 subscribers here on your YouTube channel, I'm going to be doing a giveaway. I'm giving away a pair of these bad boys, some anodized AN adjustable wrenches, and some other tools. We'll see what's up. So... Hit subscribe, head over to Facebook.com and like my page, Bull City Speed, and make sure you give me a follow on Instagram, at Bull City Speed. I'm Rye with, you guessed it, Bull City Speed, and I'm out. Peace.